welcome to the American Journal of Psychiatry Residence Journal podcast. My name is Samia Abubakar, and I'm the Culture and Social Media Editor of the AJPRJ. Our guest for today's show is Dr. Nicola Cashella, who is a faculty member at Johns Hopkins. He has a passion for all things schizophrenia and is joining us today to discuss deep brain stimulation, or DBS, as an exciting new treatment strategy for schizophrenia. Dr. Cashella, how are you? I'm fine, and what about you? I'm good too. What is DBS for those who don't know about it? It's a therapeutic procedure that delivers an electrical current through microelectrodes, the size of 116 to 132 of an inch, and that are usually implanted bilaterally in predetermined brain structure. And the electrical current is delivered with a pre established frequency and voltage. There is also a generator, of course, that generates the electrical current and a battery, which is implanted usually under the clavicle. Could you talk about how? we began to use DBS? Yes, DBS was introduced for the beginning uh, for the treatment of uh, movement disorders. And the idea behind it is that was that uh, the electrical uh, stimulation of the brain structure, like for example the subthalamic nucleus, would be therapeutic in uh, modulating the, the motor circuit from the STN to the motor cortex and treat symptoms of Parkinson's as well as uh, other type of movement disorders like dystonia, essential tremors. Over the course of the years, clinicians have developed interest in, uh, in order to treat conditions like depression, OCD, even Tourette syndrome, that are resistant to medication treatment. And, of course, the history of psychosurgery in the field of psychiatry uh, has not a good name, and definitely even the use of these relatively safe procedures in uh, patients with uh, psychiatric conditions would raise concern in the population at large. What led scientists to consider DBS for schizophrenia? The the main consideration is that there is a subgroup of patients with schizophrenia who we consider treatment-resistant. And, of course, the resistance can be defined in different ways, including uh, resistance to treatment of the three fundamental domains of uh, schizophrenia symptomatology. That is the positive symptoms, the negative symptoms, and uh, the declining cognition or abnormal cognition that follows the beginning of the illness or at times can precede also the beginning of the positive symptoms. And this group of patients tend to respond to clozapine but there is also a subgroup of, uh, of these patients who actually do not respond to clozapine. Uh, and of the 60% who respond to clozapine, we would say about 30% do not respond to the medication, and they still present with significant positive symptoms, most of them negative ones, and abnormal cognition. And this is the population that uh, those clinician scientists who work in the the field of schizophrenia, have been uh, thinking of so a subgroup of patients who initially can be studied with DBS and treated with DBS uh, and who are the ones that do not respond to clozapine. Are there any specific brain areas that you target in schizophrenia? Yes. The idea of using DBS in schizophrenia is related to a, a modulation of a circuit that involves the cortical striatal thalamic and back to the cortex loop. And there are different loops that were ascribed by Alexander and DeLong years ago here at, uh, at Johns Hopkins. And they run in parallel, but they all go through you know, the same brain structure, start with the cortex, and they go down to the striatum, as well as go back to the thalamus and back to the cortex. There are, as I said, parallel circuits. There is a limbic circuit and as well as a, an associative one, which mediates cognitive activities. The limbic one would putatively treat positive symptoms, and of course the associative one would eventually reverse the impairment of the cognition, of the abnormal cognition, that uh, part of the syndrome of schizophrenia. Worldwide, so far, there has been only one trial of eight patients with tremor resistant schizophrenia who were on clozapine, and the site of implant has been the, actually this group in Barcelona. They had two sites. One was the nucleus accumbens, which is part of that limbic circuit, and, and the other one is the a subgenual area 
below the corpus callosum that putatively would treat lack of motivation and uh, possible negative symptoms. The group in Barcelona has uh, indeed uh, implanted eight patients and three of the eight have apparently responded well to uh, the treatment. They presented one case, I think was in 2016, uh, as a case report in the biological psychiatry. Our protocol here at Hopkin is slightly different uh, than the one used uh, in Barcelona. Uh, it still uh, relates to the, the circuit that I talked about before, but the site of implant bilaterally will be the substantia nigra parser reticulata. This is an output nucleus uh, along with the globus pallidus uh, from the uh, striatum. And the idea behind the implant is to modulate the activity of the mid-dorsal nucleus of the thalamus. Because we think that this nucleus of the thalamus, which has very important functions, uh, is hypoactive in treatment resistant schizophrenia. Is this a trial that is going on right now? It is a trial that has received the approval of the FDA in 2011. They gave us the permission to study three patients to assess, of course, first of all, safety of the procedure in, uh, in schizophrenia. We have come close to study two patients, but there were uh, difficulties related to the illness itself of the patients, and we reserved the operating room uh, twice, and then twice the patient backed off, unfortunately. We are still looking at, of course, recruiting patients, and we have extended our network to the University of Colorado and Baylor College in Houston to, to recruit patients also at those sites, and they will share our protocol uh, and implant the substantia nigra parser reticulata. Are there any preclinical studies of animal models of schizophrenia in which DBS has been used? Yes, indeed. And I think this is very important and encouraging also for, for the goal, actually, of modulating the activity of the mid-dorsal nucleus of the thalamus. There have been three studies. You know, there are two rat models of, of schizophrenia in which uh, there is one which is the neuroinflammatory model, which uh, pregnant rats are administered with this so-called poly-IC, which is a pro-inflammatory molecule, and uh, progeny of the pregnant mother, once they reach adolescence, they develop uh, abnormalities in the pre-pulse inhibition, which is a physiological or electrophysiological marker, which is abnormal in schizophrenia. Now, the brain stimulation of the medial dorsal nucleus of the thalamus reverses the abnormality of the PPI or pre-pulse inhibition. The same happens with uh, the administration of an agonist of the cannabis-1 receptor uh, during the adolescent period of, uh, of a rat, uh, in which this receptor agonist uh, of the cannabis-1 receptor causes also abnormalities of the PPI, reversed also by stimulation at, at high frequency of the mid-dorsal nucleus of the thalamus, which is our target, if you want. Interestingly enough, high-frequency stimulation of the mid-dorsal nucleus of the thalamus has showed that there is an expression of genes that have to do with brain plasticity in the cortex of this animal implanted with the DBS of the mid-dorsal nucleus of the thalamus. And interestingly enough, there is a, also a model, which is the ketamine model of of schizophrenia, and once again, high-frequency stimulation of the thalamus in these animals reversed the effects of ketamine on those, uh, in those animals. I think you know, these preclinical studies encourage us uh, also to possibly move, move ahead as we are doing in uh, uh, implanting uh, patients who might benefit from this type of procedure. Thank you, Dr. Kashala, for this brief introduction to deep brain stimulation. It's been a pleasure having you on the American Journal of Psychiatry Business Journal podcast.